Yanoki, we're hearing there is a binding agreement finally between GM and Spiker Cars. How secure is this deal at the 11th hour? Well, this is an agreement that uh, was just signed recently that covers all the basic principles of the agreement. And uh, there are a few missing pieces that needs to be sorted out in the next couple of weeks, but uh, uh, we're almost there. Will the conclusion of this deal really secure Saab's future? Because we have been here before. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this uh, agreement is based upon the uh, uh, the good business plan that we have developed. It is based upon the uh, release and the launch of the new vehicles that we have basically around the corner. And it has a solid foundation for developing the brand over the next uh, several years to come. And uh, with that in mind, this is a good foundation for our future. Well, Saab, of course, is a brand that resonates deeply with many people and many people around the world. Under Spiker's ownership, will Saab continue to be Saab and continue to move in the same direction? Oh, absolutely. The biggest asset that we have is, of course, our brand. You've seen in the last several months the enormous support uh, for the Saab brand, and <clears throat> that is a good uh, foundation for us in combination with, of course, Spiker's belief in the brand as an asset that we can take even to, to uh, better, better future and better opportunity. Now, you, of course, and your colleagues have been battling for the survival of your company. And over recent months, we've seen enormous support for Saab right around the world. How has that made you feel? Well, it has been a pretty turbulent time, to, to put it mildly, I would say, at this point. But, of course, the enormous support from not only employees, dealers, suppliers, customers, and everybody that has a soft spot for Saab has been enormous. And that, I would say, is what really has kept us going. Well, it has been a very tough year, tough 15 months. What's life like now at Saab? Well, we have reached a milestone, which means that we now got to restart the business. Uh, we got to launch our products. We got to conclude uh, the final items of the, uh, the uh, uh, closing of the agreement. And then I think uh, we'll see a good future for Saab. And personally, how are you feeling now that you've managed to pull it off? Well, of course, I mean, this is also for me a milestone, and I feel very confident that not only do we have a good owner, but we have also good backing from the Swedish government, and of course, you know, our employees have done a tremendous job. I'm now talking to Victor Muller, who's Chief Executive Officer of Spiker Cars. He leads the group that has agreed terms to purchase Saab Automobile from GM. Victor Muller, as the new owner of Saab, you've been working against the clock possibly even through the night, trying to secure this deal. Many experts said it was quite impossible. How did you finally manage to achieve it in such a short space of time? How was the deal done? Uh, I think the deal was done by tenacity, by just simply not giving up. Uh, we've had tremendous adverse circumstances along the way, uh, but um, the objective to save Saab was generally overriding, and uh, we just didn't want to lose that opportunity and see such a beautiful company, such an iconic brand, with such great people um, lose their jobs, brand go down, it would have been a tremendous loss. Well, obviously, the negotiations have been between you at Spike Cars and General Motors, but how involved have the Saab team and management been involved? Well, they were very involved. I mean, uh, one has to bear in mind that this was also a, a, a carve-out of a company that had been under... Um, uh, GM's ownership for the past 20 years. So there were a tremendous lot of uh, connections between the two which had to be cut. And uh, so without the management of Saab, we would have absolutely not been able to do that. What attracts you to Saab? What was your first interest? Well, it's maybe a very uh, standard answer, but I, uh, I remember them very well when I was a kid and I, I drove Saabs. Uh, I have always been attracted to their quirkiness, their um, very unusual design, their beautiful, beautiful shapes, and, uh, and I think they are a brand that really deserves su uh, surviving. Uh, typical uh, Swedish brand with uh, ind re representing independent thinking. Um, it's very ecological, so very much of this time, uh, I thought it was a, always thought it was a very attractive brand. And with your hand on your heart, will it really secure Saab's future? Yes, definitely. Well, Spiker, as a manufacturer of supercars, you, you obviously know a thing or two about the automobile business. As you know, Saab is poised to put the new 9.5 into showrooms very shortly. What's your impression of this very important car? I think the 9.5 is the best design that I've seen 
come out of Saab since the Aero X 2006. And you see a lot of um, design elements of the, the Aero X um, uh, in the 9.5. Uh, I remember very well seeing the Aero X for the first time at the Geneva Salon in 2006, and I was completely blown away by it. And I think that uh, that particular design will pave the way for where Saab is heading and the first very, very good example of what that design DNA, so typical Saab design DNA, will bring for the future. Nevertheless, small supercar manufacturer taking over major brand, major manufacturer. A lot of people will be wondering how you're going to make Saab work. What changes are you going to make? Well, I think that first of all one has to bear in mind that the situation that a small supercar manufacturer can actually buy a company hundreds times larger than itself can only be caused by the perfect storm in this industry. Under normal circumstances, it would absolutely be the other way around. Saab would have been buying Spica. Uh, there are many examples of a cohabitation between brands like, like this, like Audi with Lamborghini, which has worked very well, Ferrari and Fiat. So there are, yeah, I think one should not pay too much attention to the fact that we are buying Saab, because that is just a mechanical thing. One should focus entirely on what will happen afterwards. Afterwards, both companies will be operating as sister companies uh, next to each other under one holding that will represent both of them. They will be benefiting to and fro from each other. And of course, it goes without saying that Little Spiker relatively will uh, benefit much more than, than Saab from Spiker. However, what we bring to the table is uh, entrepreneurship uh, and a tremendous tenacity and desire to make Saab succeed as an independent manufacturer. And that's going to be a tremendous challenge, but we're very confident that with Saab's management, which has shown incredible resilience, and uh, the resources that we have at our disposal, we will make Saab into a tremendous success. Well, there are certainly going to be some very happy employees and dealers, suppliers and customers. What message would you like to give to them? Thank you. Thank you very much. They have shown unprecedented commitment to the brand. They have shown that this brand is worth fighting for. They have shown that Saab deserves to live. And we're very pleased to tell them tonight that that is actually going to happen.